In this video, we're gonna take a look at a blue ink by Noodler's Revolution Blue. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I would still appreciate it if you checked out the entire video. Also, down in the description, you'll find a link to the Blue Ink playlist, so if you wanted to see more blues, that's where you can find them. I'm an ink guy, and let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Claire Fontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is about the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, seven seconds to dry. I'm gonna change my opinion on it. I'm gonna say it's actually just a little bit lighter than the stub and the medium is just a hair darker than the stub. The medium has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade and 12 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both are showing the tiniest bit of color variation, but we're not getting shading in the writing. And a smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, that's where they are, the Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. I forgot to lift my hand. Then a Pilot E95S with a medium nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, a couple dark spots, the N in Revolution, the S in Noodlers, the top of the L in Noodlers. The extra fine is just a tad lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, a couple spots of shading like the K in Quick, the E in Over, the 8. 18 seconds to dry. Medium is a little bit darker than the extra fine, same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade, 26 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both don't really show color variation, although there's spots of it in the extra fine. And the smear test, there's no way in Hades you get to recover if you smear while you're writing. I agree with Vita, there's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. Now you do see how little this ink actually moves. It was immediately put in and it is immediately forming a line and it's very uniform in how it moves up and only the last little bits are moving farther. Interesting when you see the second one that in only 10 minutes this ink does not budge, meaning you can expect a bit of resistance from this ink. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, some spots of shading like the E in blue, N in revolution, S in noodlers, U in revolution. The extra fine is about the same tone as the stub. No feather spread, halo sheen, some more spots of shading than we saw with the stub. Quick goes darker to lighter to darker. The R in brown, the N in brown, darker than the word. The X in fox, darker. The Z in lazy, darker, nine seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine and the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, some decent shading. The K in quick is dark. The X in fox, dark. The J in jumps, dark. The top of the L in lazy, dark. 13 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show good color variation. It shows it better than it is in the writing, but it does happen up here. And the smear test, I do not think you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, this will work very well in a note-taking situation if you need to go back and highlight because it does not budge, which you would expect from that chromatography. Water did nothing. Pen flush did nothing. One-third bleach solution did nothing. Cleaning this out of my pen, it took some of the pen flush to get it out of the pen, but not the converter. Not the... Not the the, the filling system for the E95. Now the thing is, I think that had to do with the design of that nib on this pen. However, regardless, it did take pen flush to get this entirely out of the pen. The next writing sample is done on yellow Rhodia paper. You might use this ink in a professional setting where you write on yellow paper and need a very permanent ink. And the thing about this is to look at this in the tones. 
because we're not looking for performance changes. We're looking at the tone change. And you see the stub. We go from being a blue to being really turquoise. We go from, we're, we're going to that green leaning, I'm going to say teal. We get a teal out of it. Not quite a green, but definitely a very green leaning teal here. Now, this is important if you work in an environment on yellow paper and you expected blue, and I expected this to be blue. This was much more translucent a color than I was expecting, especially from a Noodler's ink. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, and the realm of normal was 2.1 to 2.9. Noodler's Revolution Blue had a viscosity of 1.69, making it a wet ink. Now, if you're interested in how the viscosity and all of that stuff's done, there's a link to that video down in the description. The next writing sample is done on moleskin paper. For a paper with a very bad reputation with fountain pens, we do see that it has a lot of spots that bleed very heavily into the paper. This is not coming through the paper. And on top of that, it's really, in the, in the extra fine, it's not doing bad at all where you could possibly use the back of that page. The medium, that's, uh, you know, I don't know that I would, but others would. This is doing very well here, and it's gotten very minor ghosting. The bleed spots don't touch the next page. The medium, it does spread to about a broad. It doesn't really feather. No spread, or sorry, no, it spreads to a broad, no halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is about the same tone as the stub. It's got tiny feather spots, like the bottom of the Q, the E, and the T. I see a couple feather spots, but it is really performing very well here, especially for being a more aggressive ink, and so shocking. Spreads to about a fine, no halo, no sheen, no shade, three seconds to dry. Makes this really good performance for what I'm writing on. The scrubby shows a little color variation. We're not getting any in the writing, though, and a smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, and the realm of normal was 13 to 21 seconds. Noodler's Revolution Blue had an average dry time of 14 seconds, making it normal. The last writing sample is done on 28 pound premium copy paper. And despite it being an aggressive ink, we have no bleeding and no ghosting. The medium does very well. It's got the tiniest of feathering that's occurring in blue, but not something that would really be a problem for just about anybody. You see it in the L in Noodlers. No spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. The extra fine is the same tone as the stub. No feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. Really good. One second to dry. The scrubby shows a tiny bit of color variation. We're not getting it. And the smear test, you could definitely recover because you can barely smear it. Awesome. Instead of finding inks that look like Noodler's Revolution Blue, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I decided to go with a gray ink from Private Reserve's their gray flannel. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to those playlists. So what do I think of Noodler's Revolution Blue? In this pen, it looks like a faded blue, and I'm not enjoying. But in the writing samples, the tone is much nicer with a little spot of shading. It's very permanent, which can be a redeeming quality. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? I think it was obvious in that last part that a dry writing pen really puts down too light a tone for me to comfortably deal with. Instead, I would go with a medium to wet, fine, extra fine, medium, but I don't know that I would take it all the way up to a broad, having to do with the fact that this ink can be aggressive. So with some of that aggression, I would probably go with a wet fine. I hope you got something out of this video, and in the next video, we're going to take a look at Sailor's Riku Cha.